Hello, and welcome back. Why in the world would you want to use Apt? Well, if you're a new user to Linux. Well, one, flexibility for one. Flexibility using your distro's default package manager in the terminal gives you detailed information on packages, package groups, and repositories. In this video, we will be using the program such as apt and in another video, dpkg, which is the default for distributions based on Debian and Ubuntu. And we'll be using apt for this video because arguably Debian, Debian and Ubuntu have the lion's share of distributions based on them, making up the majority of the Linux distro ecosystem at the time of this video's creation. Now I know some of you out there are gonna get getting all all hangy there. It is it is what it is, you know. <laughs> Debian and Ubuntu, primarily Ubuntu, hate to say it, has the majority share out there right now. If you include everything that they that they have their hands in. Well not to mention using apt itself and not just using a GUI software managers such as Discover or the GNOME Package Manager, gives you access to tens of thousands more packages in the Ubuntu software repositories alone. If you were to just use those, you would effectively cut yourself off of a good majority of extremely useful and productive software, not to mention games, that you, if the need were to arise, you would not have access to or even know, know about if you were only to use the GUI software managers by themselves. App not only is useful for package and software management, it also has the ability to check if packages were signed and or modified before you install whether any of the components have been tampered with since it was installed. Also not to mention it is better for managing software on multiple systems where the GUI managers are designed more for single system and and quickly become time consuming if you were to attempt to use them on a larger scale. Now, before we get into the fun stuff here, I'd like to mention there is a GUI like terminal application that is built on top of app called Aptitude, where by using the arrow keys, you can move around highlighting package and packages. And by pressing enter, you select and get new packages, upgrade plus few installed programs and packages. And also there's Nala, which has a lot of the same syntaxes or syntax that apt uses. The difference between null and apt, null is built on top of apt and it opens more connections, download packages faster through those multiple, multiple connections. All right. So let's get to the basics here and let's clear this out. And the first one we're going to start off with, I'm just copying off over, uh, off my notes here, a pseudo apt update. What this does is it downloads the repository information and updates your, your local cache. That way you can get, um, act that way it tells it whether or not there's new packages ready for your system. Now, most of the distros out there will have this automatically set up for you. It'll let you know they have upgrades available. This is for manually doing it. So you just type that in, hit your enter key, it'll ask for your password, your pseudo password. And this only works if you have uh, administrative access. And it's updating. I'm gonna think about it. There we go, she's counting up. Okay, now the next one, you've updated it. You see, you got some upgrades. The sudo app upgrade. And this is gonna download your packages for you. And these are held back. It'll download your packages and ask if you wanna install them. When it asks, it's either why or no, it's a yes or no question. You want to install them? Type Y. If you don't, type no, and then hit enter. Another way you can do it: it's sudo app update. 
and then sudo apt upgrade. And what this does, and I just noticed I have a typo. I'm almost type, always typoing. What this does is it puts two commands on one line and it saves you the time of having to, you know, separate them and type out twice. Now, if you hit, the, now if you give it the uh, Y flag at the end, oops. What that's going to do is it's going to automatically answer yes for you if there's any upgradable packages. Now, the downside to that is if there's issues with the packages or there's a bug in it, it could mess up your system. So what you want to do is you always want to do it this way. I missed the app part over there. I just noticed that too. Get back on over to the end down there. And you always want to do it this way and read what comes out, what, what it spits out in the text for you. In case there's any, uh, you know, issues that need your attention. And auto remove. So there's another command you can, you can use. If you got, uh, packages that are no longer needed. You can type in sudo apt auto remove and that will automatic that will uh, remove the packages for you. Type in Y. And this would be a good time to bring in the sudo app purge. What purge does is not only does it remove packages, it removes um, the packages that auto remove doesn't remove doesn't remove by default. Sometimes it leaves configuration scripts and other scripts lying around inside your system, and using the purge command will get rid of them. Okay, now I'm going to type in sudo apt upgrade again, and we're going to split this window here. I'm going to clear this out. Oops, come on. Type in sudo apt up upgrade. Going by my sh my notes here. What the original way of doing this was sudo apt get upgrade. And if you notice there's a difference here. Type my password. And let's read this real fast. Rebuilding package notes done, building defensive tree done, reading state information done, calculating upgrade done. The following package has been kept back for utilities DNS dash root dash data. Now, if we type in sudo app. Update now. There wasn't any uh, difference in that one. Whoops. App get. I've been enter here. Let it up. Do a thing there, and we'll try to get that one. Okay. Now, if you notice down at the end down here, this is reading package list done, building dependency done, reading say information done. Two packages can be upgraded when app app list upgradable to see them. That's out there on the apt dash get. It leaves out information. So the correct way, I the way I not I don't know, I don't want to say correct way, but the way that I use it is is the apt because I get all the information I need. Now, if you don't want all the information, go ahead and type in app get if you want to. I've already installed this program because I've already recorded this video once, 
And that just deleted that out again. Son of a gun. Give me a second here. I'm going to. Nope. This mouse is uh, going bad. I had to scroll back. It was in in my recent command, so thankfully it was still there. We're going to go ahead and uh, search for this uh, program here. It's going to show the information on it. It's a game that I downloaded out of the repositories. And what, what the command is, the pseudo apt dash cache show UFO AI. Package UFO AI, MD64, 2.5.6, priority optional, universe games, Ubuntu. And these are all the uh, dependencies for it. And there's the recommends, the suggest, file name, size, then MD5, MD5 sum right here, the, sh the SHA-1, the SHA-256, and the SHA-512. These are all... Um, These are all numbers that you can use to check to make sure that this is the original program from the repositories. It's just to make sure that nobody's messed with it. The security feature. Here's the home page. You can click on that and it'll open up in your browser. Gives you the description of what it is. And there's the description MD5 right down here as well. Clear that out. If you type in sudo apt-get install by Tetris, it'll install the program. Now, we've already installed it. Grab that real fast. They can see the difference if there is one. Yeah, there's a huge difference there. You get more information on individual packages if you run it this way than you would this way. Okay, let's close this side out. Now here's another command. Sudo out cache. Okay, be named. And what that command does is it lists every package that you have installed in your system. And there's a lot here. So much it went past the thousand line uh, memory maximum for the for this terminal. <laughs> Jeez, a lot. Okay, we're going, now that we did that, we did search for the package. Another thing you can do if you want to get um, some more information. Now, if you just, here, I'll go ahead and show you. Let's put the screen again. Clear this out. Apt. Search. Uh, do something simple. P sensor. That uh, brings up everything with the name P sensor in it. Now, say you wanted uh, some more information out of it. P sensor. Type, rep, oops, uppercase B, space Q, space dash, uppercase A, and then P 
sure. And did I type that right? Uh, looks like I did. Wrap temperature, invalid context length argument. Now, the reason I did that was because I forgot to add pseudo. Yeah. It gave me an error there because I didn't add pseudo because it was calling in uh, the core fu lower core function when when I did that. All right. Apt go p sensor. Another command you can use for the program, and it gives you the information, the dependencies, the developer, the mailing list. The home page, app sources. All right. Sudo app install. Go install that real fast. Kind of a neat program. What this what this program does this is an example out of the book that I have. I paid sixty dollars for the Ubuntu Linux Bible by David Clinton and Christopher Negus. I got it about three years ago. And what this does is it shows the temperature, your CPUs, your NVIDIA card, or your graphics card, and the fan speed back up. Every right here, it shows the RPM, the RPMs, and you know what I set it for was sixty three percent, and that's what it's showing. And that's the temperature right there for it. Oops. Now this is going to not want to type in Q. It won't, won't do it. Control Q. Nope. Doesn't work. So we'll close that window back out and move right along. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go now to remove a program. It's a sudo apt remove D sensor and that remove that removes the program out of your uh, opt your system. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and purge that. Make sure I get rid of all the files off of it. And do you know, apt auto remove to get rid of anything else that's on there. You always want to run those two when you're doing it manually to make sure you get everything. Okay. Now say you wanted to find uh, from the terminal what's in your uh, sources list. Oh, good. It didn't delete that one. I'd have been mad if it would have deleted that one. <laughs> you want to type in cat slash Etsy slash app slash sources list. And everything that's uncommented in here. One there, one up here, here, there, here, here. 
those are all the uh, repositories it's pulling for from. Now the ones that are uncom the ones that are commented out are the ones that won't pull from. Mm. Excuse me. And if you wanted to find out information on the sources list, type in man sources list and that will bring up the man page for it. And then you can read about it until your heart's content. There's a lot of good information in here. I mean a lot. <laughs> and to get out of that, it's Q. Another um, program, if it's installed, is the info it does the same thing as man but it's more well more information you can get out of it excuse me Woo, puppy <laughs> i have a uh error sound that goes off and it's a dog <laughs> every time it does it kind of makes me jump all right now here's another command that you can do find out information about your sources list the ls slash etsy slash app slash sources dot list dot d now these are the extra ones the extra sources list that are in there Okay, we're going to replace this with <laughs> it again with cat. And if you what this is going to do is this is going to get information about a specific one that you're interested in. Okay, I'm going to put a I'm going to put the slash at the end of it and paste that in there. And this shows you all the repos that it pulls from. Now, say you wanted to add a repository. Very carefully do this so it doesn't do it. That is a pain to type out. And I don't type very good. Okay. <clears throat> Warning. You should not go willy-nilly out on the internet and add repositories that you think something looks really cool. There's a reason why your distribution has all the repositories for your, for your distro. It could be malware, spyware. It's just a bad idea to do this unless you know it's a reputable source. Like Ansible. Ansible is a reputable source that I trust and many others do as, as well. So to get a repository added in there, it's sudo apt-add-repository space ppa colon ansible slash ansible. So it's whatever the repository name slash repository name. At least it is for this one. Okay. Description. Ansible is a radically simple IT automation platform that makes your application systems easier to deploy, avoid writing scripts or custom code to deploy and update your applications, Automate in a language that approaches plain English using SSH with no agents to install on remote systems. If you face any issues with installing Ansible, PPA file an issue here. There's always uh, this information down below on, on the reputable repositories. And it's asking enter to continue or control C to cancel. When we hit enter, Adding it, adding it, and uh, updating my system.
Now what we need to do is type in ls slash etsy slash app slash sources dot list dot d. Look at the sources list again. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove the Ansible uh, source there. So what you want to type in, you want to type in sudo. Oops, I forgot the most part, most important part. And I'm going to roll tonight. Um, you want to type in sudo rm for, for remove slash etsy slash app slash sources dot list dot d slash ansible dash ubuntu dash ansible dash jammy dot list. Now where I got the la last part of this is right up here. And that's why you want to type in the ls etsy slash apps slash sources dot list dot d to get all this information back up for you. And we're going to go ahead and do that. And this will remove that from our repositories, but you, it won't update the system automatically. You're gonna have to do that yourself. <clears throat> and this makes sure that, you know, your sources list is up to date. And well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I didn't fumble through it too bad. I got to do a lot of editing. Hopefully you won't see half the stuff that I did wrong. <laughs> At least the stuff that, you know, I got mad about because this mouse is crap. And half the time it deletes the text off my notes. So I was getting a little confused what was going on. So I'd had to refer back to the book, pull that back out and then compare it with my notes to make sure the information I was giving you was correct. I am going to try out that game. So I will, I will see you guys next time. Oh, and before I forget, if you wouldn't mind uh, clicking that follow button and liking, I'd appreciate it. And again, I'm out, and I will see you guys next time. Next video, or one of the next videos, is going to be on DPKG. I'll see you then.